let me in. This is Tom Oates and my ship has got no fuel. Please. Um, what? Give me, let me in. This is Tom Oates and my ship has got no fuel. Ah! Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, come in. Dude, the door's open. You can push it. Pretty bad weather, ain't it? <laughs> Long time, Colonel Cortex. You, Amitella, what are you doing here? I'm here to hijack you, obviously. This is a certified non-hijack zone. Well, certify this. <laughs> Dude, what the heck? That's not cool! How about 4-point max schooling for your face and your feet? I shouldn't have let you in in the first place. Wait, what are you doing there? Can't you see, old man? We are driving right into the brainstorm. Wait. No! <laughs> okay. I know what you might be thinking, Adil, what the heck was that epic fight scene between the prefrontal cortex and the amygdala? Well, that, my friend, was an amygdala hijack. Before I tell you about what an amygdala hijack technically is, I think we must first understand what anger is and where it is rooted from. Quick analogy. Anger is not a disease, it's a symptom. Your anger has deep roots attached to experiences like rejection, not getting recognized, losing, the environment, etc. And to most of these confrontations, our actions fall into the following few categories. J. Justify your actions. A. Argue to prove you're right. D. Defend yourself. And E. Explain why you did something. Jade. And guess what? 99% of the times, these actions don't change crap. If they are angry and are hurting you, don't jade. They will just continue to hurt you. Instead, use the grey rock technique. Be brief when you answer to any of their questions. Be factual and concise. Just be a grey rock. Say yes, no, I don't know. Don't give any emotions. Giving your emotions is only going to feed into that drama. Well, obviously this method does not work everywhere. But I'll talk about other techniques too in the later part of this video. At the core of impulsive anger lies a phenomenon known as the amygdala hijack. The amygdala is a primitive part of the brain responsible for processing emotions especially fear and aggression. When a threat is perceived, even a verbal insult, the amygdala can override the rational brain, the prefrontal cortex, triggering a fight-or-flight response even before logical thinking has a chance to kick in. Here's an example of an amygdala hijack. So remember the last time you had an argument with your mom or someone? You got really defensive and started to justify your action. The argument slowly turned into a fight. Like I said earlier, your mind goes to a primitive state, right? And you choose between fight or flight. You forget about all the time she cared for you and provided for you. Maybe switching on the fan for you when you didn't even ask for it but you actually needed it. Maybe sometimes making awesome food for you when you're like really really hungry but you just didn't tell her. All of these memories get switched off and you lose your sanity for a while. So what happens to your body during the hijack? Increased heart rate and blood pressure. Shallow rapid breathing. Muscle tension and headaches. Gastrointestinal upset. And what happens on a long term or repeated hijack? Weakened immune function, anxiety and panic disorders, depression, insomnia, digestive issues, cardiovascular diseases, chronic stress increases risk of hypertension and heart diseases. <laughs> the Takotsubo cardiomyopathy or the broken heart syndrome. Takotsubo refers to a Japanese octopus trap which looks something like this. This is your normal heart and this is your grieving heart. Very similar, huh? This disorder is frequently triggered by intense emotional or physical stress. For example, the unexpected death of a family member or domestic abuse. Now, I've only been talking about pain and symptoms for a while. So here are a few techniques that might make you feel better. Beating the white elephant. The white elephant is something that bothers you. Don't deny that the white elephant exists. Rather think of three pink elephants as something you're grateful for. Here's an example. You get kicked out of your job. You could sit down and cry like a normie or you could think of three things you're grateful for. I have my health. I'm strong and capable of working, learning and trying again. I'm grateful for the experience and skills I've built in this job. They didn't vanish. They came with me. 
Gratitude doesn't erase pain, but it widens your emotional perspective, so pain isn't all you see. Okay, this video is going way too longer than I expected, but here's the last chapter of this video. The Cognitive Triangle. Here's what it looks like. This triangle is really really helpful and you can use this triangle to solve or at least handle your problems. Here's an example for you to understand on how to solve one. You see your friends post a story of them going to a cool restaurant. Thought. I got left out. Feelings. They hate me. Behavior. They did that to hurt me. Now here's how you solve this triangle. Like how you'd solve a Rubik's Cube. Find that spot where you think the root cause lies in. Which you can handle of course. And try to think in a different perspective other than what you were previously thinking. Now here in this example, the root cause might not even be the feeling. It could be the thought itself. When you think about a reason as to why they left you out, try to think from their lens too. Maybe they went to a non-veg restaurant, but you are a vegetarian. Or maybe even if they did do that to hurt you, let it go. Forgive and forget. You don't need to carry that excess baggage, dude. And I don't want to end this video by saying anger is always bad and all that. It's not. Just look at the movements against injustice and apartheid, for example. Their anger led to progress. Your enemy isn't anger. It's uncontrolled anger. Use it with purpose. If the reason feels petty or short-lived, hold back. But if it's for something meaningful, use it with discipline.